Joining me now, Congresswoman Pramila Jayapal, chair of the Congressional Progressive Caucus and ranking member on the Subcommittee on Immigration Integrity, Security and Enforcement. Congresswoman Jayapal, welcome back to The Sunday Show. As I said, we're still awaiting the complete details of the border deal, but we do know that it will include tougher restrictions that Republicans have wanted for years. Will you be able to support this bill with those restrictions if it does indeed get passed out of the Senate and gets to the House for a vote in the floor? Well, Jonathan, it's always good to see you. Good to be back on your show. Um, look, I think that the challenge here is that the Republican Party is controlled by Donald Trump, a man who has said that immigrants are poisoning the blood of our country. They are, the Republicans are impeaching Secretary Mayorkas um, in a move that even legal scholars have said on the conservative side and said uh, is ridiculous. And this is not a party that is serious about taking on the underlying reforms that we need. Unfortunately, the bill that has been negotiated in the Senate, and I know some of the details, but I have not seen the text. Um, I have been, uh, you know, have been able to get, uh, you know, at least some of the details of what's in there. And unfortunately, it goes to an enforcement-only strategy again, a strategy that Donald Trump used, um, putting in place things like Title 42-like authority, um, rapid expulsion, expedited removal, mandatory detention. These are all things that Donald Trump and Stephen Miller cooked up on a whiteboard and we all knew were not going to work. And in fact, they didn't work. Under Donald Trump, let's be clear, Immigration, undocumented, uh, undocumented immigration grew by over 300 percent during Donald Trump's term. Why? Because enforcement only measures do not work. What we need is to actually have underlying reforms of the immigration system that modernize the system. We have 8 million families that are in the immigration backlog, 2 million that are in the work employment backlog. And unless we tackle it at that level and provide more legal pathways for people to come to this country, we are not going to solve the situation at the border. So very difficult for me to imagine that I would vote for this bill. Um, I need to see the text, but for very different reasons, because Jonathan, I have a problem when Democrats sort of try to adopt the tough talking rhetoric of Donald Trump. It never benefits us. It doesn't solve the problem. And it is it is not the way we should be leading as we explain to the American people that the the uh, connection between legal immigration, more legal pathways leads to fewer people coming to the border and trying to cross illegally. Less legal pathways, more of that at the border. So we need to really expand the legal pathways and reform the underlying mm -hmm. system. Well, mm -hmm. Congresswoman, I've got to get you on two, on two things before I have to let you go. Your reaction to the standalone bill on aid for Israel that Speaker Johnson plans to bring to the floor this week. Another hypocritical act. He had a chance to pass Israel aid, but he tied it to cutting IRS uh, funding. And now he wants to pass this because he doesn't want to uh, look at, for example, aid to um, Gaza, to, to humanitarian aid to Gaza. None of that is going to be included. They're probably going to try to do it again by suspension of the rules. They can't even pass bills through the Rules Committee when they control the Rules Committee. So this is just another cynical ploy. Look, this is the least productive Congress in history. They've only passed 27 bills that have actually been signed into law, even though we voted on over 700. When this suspension to the rules, is that the one where you would have to get three, it, it would have to pass by three quarters of the chamber? That's correct. That's exactly <laughs> right. So they've been doing that uh, multiple times this last week right. when they couldn't their bills passed through the Rules Committee. They brought them to the floor under suspension of the rules. Uh, one more question for you. Speaker Johnson plans to bring the impeachment of Secretary Mayorkas to the full House for a vote this week. Um, the Republicans have the slimmest majority in, in history, uh, and at least one member says he'll vote against it. How's that vote going to go? I have no idea. It depends on whether people are courageous enough to stand up to the the extreme right wing of of the uh, Republican Party. And there's very few that are willing to do that these days. But as I said, conservative legal scholars like Jonathan Turley and others have said that this is a policy disagreement. 
the Republicans can hate what Secretary Mayorkas is doing, but this is not an impeachable offense. And that right. is why Ken Buck has already come out, and Republican Ken Buck from Colorado has already come out and said he's a no on this. I hope others do as well, because we are really making a mockery of the impeachment process. And uh, Speaker Johnson is, is you know, look, he, he's, he's trying to do, I'm sure he's trying to do what he can do after going through so many speakers on the Republican side. But it's the same menu with a different waiter. The Republican Party is in chaos, <laughs> and Mike Johnson has no ability to control uh, that extreme right, right wing of his caucus.